Oh, it'd be nice if the time machine finished charging sometime soon. Are you good to go? The machine still needs a bit of time to charge, so just hold tight, okay? The machine's finally got enough energy for another round trip. Now you can go back and help the others. I hope they're all safe. I'm sure they are. Maybe they've already defeated the androids and brought peace back to the world. If that's the case, it might be nice to bring the others back here with me. The time machine only has room for one person. But I can totally see the others cramming their way in anyway. Goku would jump at the chance to take on more powerful opponents. <laughs> You're right. Based on what I saw of him, he would probably be excited to come here. But if they haven't defeated the androids, you're planning on joining in on the fight, aren't you? Just be careful, okay? Don't get yourself killed. I won't. And you stay safe too, Mom. I'll make it back in one piece. I can't rest until our world is at peace too. And so, Trunks made his way back to the past. Little did he realize that waiting for him there were two completely different androids, as well as less ruthless, but still dangerous androids 17 and 18. And to make matters worse, Cell, a bio-android far deadlier than the other androids, had appeared and threatened all life on Earth. But thanks to Goku and the others' training, as well as Gohan's transformation into something beyond that of a Super Saiyan, Cell was defeated. With peace now restored in the past, Trunks returns to the future, more experienced and determined to save his world. Mom, I'm back. Welcome home, Trunks. Wait just a minute. Look at you. They say kids grow up fast, but this is ridiculous. I trained in a special place called the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. It's on Kami's lookout. One year inside is only a day on the outside. Not really sure how that works, but at any rate, I'm just glad you're back and doing okay. So, did everything work out? That look on your face tells me it did. It did. Oh, so Goku still ended up dying in the end. Well, at least Gohan was able to avenge him. Yeah. Oh, and you were right about Father. He wasn't just a cold-hearted person after all. Huh? When I first saw him fight, I honestly thought he was just a ruthless, selfish person. You know what I mean? If you and baby me were ever in danger, he didn't try to save us. All he cared about was his opponent. Oh, Vegeta. Can't say I'm all that surprised, though. <laughs> but during the year me and him trained together, he was more focused on the moment. He was tough on himself and even seemed a little lonely. Right. Now that I think about it, he could be like that at times. He wouldn't spar with me at first, but eventually, he grew to acknowledge my power. We would have serious sparring matches, and sometimes even conversations. Conversations? About what? Um, well, I say conversations, but it was really just me talking to him, not with him. He would only reply with, I see, or, Mph. The conversations never really went anywhere. Jeez, <laughs> that's Vegeta for you. But, right as our training was coming to an end.
Trunks tells Bulma of his time in the past, specifically when Cell, eager to increase his power, began draining the population of their energy. Nearly a year inside the hyperbolic time chamber had passed since Vegeta and Trunks first entered and began their training to defeat Cell. <laughs> Come at me at full power. Okay, father. Here I go. I shouldn't have to say this, but do not hold back. I won't. You know, it's almost been a year since we started our training. We should probably get ready to give the room to Goku and Gohan. No. Not until I achieve the absolute power I deserve. I intend to use every second we've got in here. But you've already broken the Super Saiyan barrier. Are you trying to push yourself even further? <laughs> if I plan on destroying Cell and finally putting Kakarot in his place, then I need to be stronger. I'm not going to get through to him at this point. He won't stop training until he's the one who's satisfied. Father, is surpassing Goku more important to you than defeating Cell? <laughs> You've got it a bit wrong. What I want is simply to be number one. Kakarot just happens to be an obstacle between me and my rightful place at the top. And what's worse is that he's a Saiyan. Like me. Trunks, as a proud Saiyan yourself, you should never set limits on the power you can attain. You should always strive to be the best. But know this. As long as I'm around, you're going to have fierce competition. Father. This might actually be the first time he's given me fatherly advice. If you can call it that. This... Obsession with power. Goku loves to fight powerful enemies, too. Maybe it's a pure-blooded Saiyan thing. 
In my world, all I could think about was defeating the androids. Restoring peace was more important to me than the pursuit of strength. You said that Gohan was the only one who trained you, right? <laughs> he's just as soft and naive as Kakarot. No, he's not. What's even more concerning, though, is that I was killed by the androids in your time so easily. Me, the Prince of the Saiyans. Huh? Don't be satisfied with simply beating the androids and restoring peace. Those are short-sighted goals at best. I'm going to push myself harder. And I won't stop until I am number one. If you do the same, and you aim for something better, I'm sure you'll have no problem with the androids. Father, you're right. I'll do what I can. <laughs>